Good morning, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita, so happy to see you here today. I woke up with a sinus infection, so I am groggy and congested, um, which some of that is just tiredness, but some of it is also sinus. Um, I feel as though I get a sinus infection every two weeks now. I think it has to do with allergies, etc. but we are here. It is Monday morning. Let's do this. Today I have a single candle for you today from a company that I haven't reviewed on this channel, and that is Chesapeake Bay. So this right here with their white, I think they have black um, ceramic candles as well, um, but this is kind of their classic aesthetic. They do have another line that is kind of frosted glass with bamboo or wood lids on them. And I know that they sell those at Target. I think they sell them at Yankee Candle, even in the brick and mortar stores. Um, and they sell them at Kohl's too. My impression, and this is just smelling on cold, I have not burned them, so please take this with a grain of salt. My impression is that those frosted glass ones are not quite as strong um, in terms of strength, throw, and perhaps even nuance as their like classic ones. Um, I notice that the frosted ones tend to go on sale quite a bit, whereas these tend not to, which I think is another kind of little indication. Um, if you're not aware, Chesapeake Bay was acquired by Yankee Candle in 2017. So about seven years, six, seven years, which is kind of my impression too of how long it's been. Um, so they do sell these on yankeecandle.com as well as in their stores, at least some select candles. Um, in an earlier video when I was talking about Yankee Candle and the like hot mess of subsidiaries that they now manage and frankly that make their brick and mortar stores very chaotic and confusing, the two biggest subsidiaries that they manage are Chesapeake Bay and Woodwick. Um, so those two re should receive a little bit of extra attention, I think. Um, and let's talk, let's talk about Chesapeake Bay. Um, I, in preparation for this video was like, what's the history on Chesapeake Bay? Expecting to not find hardly anything. And then I went down this enormous rabbit hole. There is an amazing history of this particular candle company. And I kind of want to share it with you because I was inspired by it. I think it's really fantastic. And we're also here to review an actual candle and the candle in question is Midnight Forest. So, um, Target has been selling these Chesapeake Bay for for quite a long time even before they carried a large quantity of Yankee candle branded candles in their store they had these Chesapeake Bays I actually thought initially that the Chesapeake Bay was Target's subsidiary or Target's proprietary brand because they were like the best it was like the Target candles and Chesapeake Bay and I I just thought Chesapeake Bay was like their best proprietary candles. <laughs> so if you've been shopping Target candles for a while, you will know that their candles are terrible. I've said this before. I, I, I can't, I literally can't think of a retailer that spends as much time, effort and floor space to candles and have them be so subpar. Like it's incredible, it blows my mind. It really does. Um, I was at, if you're in the Midwest, you know the store's Meyer. Meyer is like a, it's like a super target for those of you who are not in the Meyer area. It's like a super target in that it's basically like, like a low budget department store along with a full grocery. That's what Meyer is. Um, and Meyer tends to, <laughs> my sister and I love Meyer, but we've grown into that because we're old ladies now. <laughs> so at least in my neck of the woods in Ohio, I think they, I think they hail from Michigan. Um, Meyer has a very like geriatric crowd kind of feel to it. <laughs> It's a lot of old people who shop at Meyer, but like Laurel and I now love it. They're very spacious stores, very high ceilings, kind of warehouse-like. 
Um, and the clientele does tend to be a little on the older side. And the whole thing is just very calming and soothing for me and my sister. So we've become huge Meyer fans. Anyway, close parentheses. I was at a Meyer about a year ago and they have an enormous like aisle of candles. But smartly, they're not proprietary candles. They have like every Tuscany candle that has been ever made in like ever. And if you know, if you don't know, Tuscany has like their bare budget kind of line that they target to grocery stores, but they also have like other lines that are actually like more thought and care has gone into them in terms of packaging, etc. They had a ton of Northern Lights, which is a candle company up in um, Upper State New York, if I'm not mistaken. They have Yankee Candle. They have, um, I, gosh, I can't even think of all of the different conglomerate brands. They have almost every brand like of candle that is out there that would possibly be sold at a place like you know, a department store or whatever else. I mean, it's obviously like more on the low budget side, but still, um, and I was so impressed and I walked away thinking like, why doesn't Target do this? I mean, Target's candles are just so bad. They look good, but they're really bad, you know? Anyway, so we'll, we'll close parentheses on that too. Um, Chesapeake Bay has always been a pretty good bet at Target. Um, and they are actually a standalone company. So um, Chesapeake Bay was founded in 1994. I've just figured all of this out. 1994 by a Chinese couple or Chinese American. They had they they immigrated to America in like the early 90s, basically. So this was three years or so after they had arrived in America. They were living in Annapolis, Maryland. Their names are Mei um, Zhu. I think that's how that sounds. Mei, Mei Zhu. Her name is Mei Zhu. I hope that that's pronounced correctly. And her husband, David Wong. Um, they founded this company and like did it in their basement the way that like Mick Hittrich did Yankee Candle, etc. cetera. Um, May graduated in 1989 in China during the Tiananmen Square debacle. And she said that the government so cracked down at that moment that if you graduated, like they sent you to a rural factory. Like they were just trying to divide and conquer and like not allow any other kind of like education and in fact re-education and so she said I was sent to a factory a rural factory and it was terrible and I had to move to another city in order to like get a better job and then finally it was just so bad the the atmosphere and the culture in China was so bad that in 1991 me and my husband moved to America so they were here in America and um she she said that she loved going in the really high and department stores like Bloomingdale's, etc. And she said, first of all, I loved being sprayed with fragrances on the lower level, you know, where they have the cosmetics and the perfumes, because I love fragrance and I love fashion. And then I would go to the second floor and the second floor was full of like women's fashion and I would oogle over that. And she said, the higher that I went in terms of floors, like the merchandise just started getting more and more dated and like not fashion forward. She said, by the time you got to home goods in the early 90s, she said the home goods were so bad. It was like your grandmother, she said. It's probably like a lot of Laura Ashley. <laughs> And she wasn't used to that. I mean, even in China where there's a, there was a lot of poverty, like there was, there was just a different kind of aesthetic that was fresher and more modern and more thoughtful. So her and her husband like made this little company for like, I think they called it like Pacific trade or something like that. And they had contacts in China and they would bring home goods from China and develop some their own and go to trade shows and basically sell all these home goods. And she said that she noticed that in every single order, everybody had a candle. They wanted the candles. And especially when they started to bring across some simple scented candles, they like flew off the shelves. So her and her husband were like, okay, we need to do candles and we need to do scented candles. 
So they started doing scented candles. They called it Chesapeake Bay because they loved that Chesapeake Bay realm, kind of stretching from Annapolis all the way down here to Virginia. Um, and they loved the nature and they, I'm sure they like vacationed and stuff like that. And what they wanted was like a more nuanced and unique kind of candle company that was like outdoorsy, that was spa-like, that included many different fragrances that weren't being represented even by larger companies like Yankee Candle. She said like a place like, like the candles that came across and were sold in America, there would be a mulberry candle for instance, or a vanilla candle, but you would never find a candle that was just like conceptual or atmospheric, one that was called like Copper Moon or something. She said that just was not done at all. And that's what I wanted to do. She, and I have a quote from her. She said, I don't have much time, and I didn't at that time, to get my nails done, much less go to a spa. But if I had a moment where I could burn a candle, even if it was 30 minutes, I could enter that space. And so those are the kinds of fragrances that she started to experiment with in the Chesapeake Bay collection. They do, and I noticed this, the Chesapeake Bay candles do tend to lean, which I love, a little bit more masculine, a little bit more spicy and dark and nature forward, etc. And actually on the Yankee Candle website, they even said, and this is a quote, the collection's fine fragrances trend toward darker notes of wood, leather, and spice unquote, as well as being nature inspired. Um, so even now that's like a real forte for Chesapeake Bay. And I noticed that just smelling them in the aisle at Target. Um, and I think that's also being invoked in those like um, softer brushed glass as well. So anyway, they did this and, and at first like their candles didn't move because they were just so out of the box but they started to, and they started to really succeed. And actually, um, May had an opportunity to design a candle for the White House and Michelle Obama in like 2009 or something like that. So she's a really big deal and she's become a huge Chinese American entrepreneur. She like totally believes in the American dream and she lived it. And she has a book that's entitled Burn, as in a candle burning. And it's about her life and it's about entrepreneurship. And it even says at the top, creator of Chesapeake Bay Candle. So I'm gonna link her website down below and link that book down below, etc. Because I was just, I was just so happy to discover all of this amazing history that I did not know. I just thought it was like ho hum, another like conglomerate that was being, you know, acquired by an even larger conglomerate, etc. And it's just so amazing when you hear stories like that, especially of immigrants. I just think that's fantastic. And I'm a huge fan of America, and I have a, I'm a huge fan of when America works and when immigrants come and they like make the most of America. Like it's just, it's so fantastic outside of even loving the candles. So um, I'm gonna link all of that down below. And since we had such a terrible Asian American South Pacific line from Bath and Body Works like a month ago, this is hopefully a little bit of a like consolation prize for that. Okay, so um, they were acquired by the way by Yankee Candle in 2017. I said that actually, <laughs> I said that before. So now they're run by Yankee Candle and I really hope Yankee Candle does a good job managing them. And now that I know the story, I'm even more like concerned that they like manage this particular line well, not least because all of these Chesapeake Bay candles I've noticed have really been in my wheelhouse. I lean masculine, I lean darker, I lean a little bit more conceptual, and I definitely lean like nature forward. So in some ways, this candle like company is like made for me. Okay, so let's talk about this one. Um, so there are several, and by several, I mean, usually it seems as though Target tries to keep up about six or seven of these classic ones on the floor at any given time. Um, and they sell them at the exact same price as what Yankee Candle sells them. Um, so Yankee Candle sells these for $17.99. They are 12 ounce candles and they are a soy blend. Um, so I'm not really sure if that's a 
For me, it's a little bit boutique-y for Yankee Candle. So Yankee Candle tends to sell um, candles that are much bigger than this for like a 34, you know, double the amount, but then they run a ton of sales. And often Chesapeake Bay is not included in that. So I would say that Chesapeake Bay does kind of feel, at least from a consumer's perspective, a little bit niche and a little bit like like a boutique kind of candle, but still within a very reasonable price point, I think. They are two wick as well. So if you think of Bath & Body Works being about 14 or 15 ounces, it's a little bit less than that with one less of a wick, um, but $17.99 is a pretty good price for a candle like this, especially if it's sophisticated. Um, and like I said, soy blend. Um, so they have a cashmere plum candle that I've always had my eye on. I think cashmere plum, is kind of like a very, it's a dark, jammy, musky kind of candle. Um, and it's definitely my vibe. I love like um, Santiago Huckleberry from like Voluspa. It's very much in that genre. And I think it has a pretty good following. I've not actually burned it, but I will definitely do so going forward. That's a very popular one. But when they were running that 30% off on Target Circle Week, I wanted this one, which frankly, every time I look for it in the store, because I smell it almost every time I'm at Target, every time I look for it, I would say 50% of the time it is sold out, which is a really good sign. And it was on the floor and I was like, oh heck, if I'm gonna try one Chesapeake Bay candle, let it be Midnight Forest. So this is about Midnight Forest. Friends, I love this candle. I will 100% buy it again no question. And I noticed that about halfway through, I was starting to ration the candle. You know how that is? Like you've got all kinds of candles, especially if you're a candle person, you've got all kinds of candles burning even at the same time, but certainly from day to day, right? Just so many candles in, so many candles out, but that special candle where like you don't want it to end. And when you go to light a candle in the house, you're like, oh, should I light Midnight Forest? No, I'm gonna save that for a special moment. I'm gonna save that for a special bubble bath, right? That's a really good indication to you that like you have a good candle on your hands and one that's getting under your skin and is quite successful. So I would say that that definitely happened. I was burning this hot and heavy and then like I reached a certain point and I'm like, no, I will only burn it at special times. So now it's kind of <laughs> the last, the last month or so has been just very sporadic kind of burns and usually when I'm having a bubble bath or something or just really need a moment with my special can, I need my bedroom to smell like this right now, I'm having a hard day, etc. right? So the blurb on this one says, the midnight breeze cuts through notes of mint leaves, balsam fir, and green apple, while the base of sandalwood, moss, and musk cultivate a forest scene at night. And basically all of those notes are just listed as top, middle, and bottom. So the top notes are mint leaves and balsam fir, interestingly enough, mid notes green apple, and base notes sandalwood, moss, and musk. Um, it's a great candle. Now, here toward the end, I'm getting, I, I, I can't say this was a sooty candle, but it got moderately sooty, especially in the bottom half. So I'm getting a little bit of smoke and a little bit of carbon residue at this point, just smelling it. This burned all the way down to the wick clips, by the way, like a dream. Um, but I'm very happy to say that given this fragrance, and frankly, given the fragrances that Chesapeake Bay does that are especially dark, musky, jammy, or woody, or whatever else, you get a little bit of carbon residue or smoke or sooting. It goes in with the fragrance perfectly. It does not mar it. That's one of like the silver linings of kind of wood or musky kind of candles you get. They can stand up pretty well to some amount of sooting. I would have to say that the moss note came out even more when it was burned, and that's what I'm smelling a lot of. There's a real moss musk note, but it's really lovely. It's really well done because sometimes the moss note can just be kind of gross. I um, reviewed, it was a nest candle. What was it, vetiver and, was it vetiver and moss? Oh, yikes, I can't remember. Um, but it's in my playlist. By the way, there are playlists on this channel. So if you just go to the playlist and then it's grouped by company. So if you go to the Nest playlist, it should be in there. I think it was, it's a new, a fairly new fragrance for them. And I, I wanna say that it's, 
vetiver and moss. Um, that is a candle that was just kind of gross. I mean, it was, it was vetiver and it was moss. Like it wasn't like a, it, it was, it was fine advertising, but like it just, it just didn't recommend either fragrance note, you know, it just kind of gave it to you. And then like it sat there and you just kind of felt like nothing was being done with it so that you were just kind of getting a very authentic vetiver and moss, moss, but like, it wasn't something that you really wanted your house to smell like, if that makes sense. And I say that even as a lover of vetiver and moss. This is a beautiful moss. And I think it's because it's been mixed so beautifully with the sweetness of the balsam fir, for one thing. And there is a little bit of, I'm going to call it a fruity finish. So a la Harry Slatkin, this is a fruity finish. If you were to smell this candle... I don't know that you would necessarily go toward apple or pick that out. And you may not even say that there's a fruit in it, but there's a sweetness and there's like a, a vegetal and herbal sweetness um, that could very well be a pear or an apple or something like that. But the pear and the apple is not coming forward on its own as a pear and an apple. It's really just enhancing the like botanical greenness of the candle and making it palatable and beautiful and sweet and like its best version basically rather than just being about the apple or the pear. If you are concerned about mint, and I would be because I don't love mint, definitely not in home fragrance, do not be concerned. I'm actually not getting a whole lot of mint. If there's mint here, and I, I have no reason to question that it's not, I think it's playing the same role as the apple in that it's just kind of enhancing in kind of a vegetal, herbal, sweet kind of way. So if it's there, it's kind of a sweet mint rather than like a really biting or aromatherapy kind of mint. And like I said, I'm not getting a whole lot of mint. I am getting something that's like herbal and even strongly herbal. But when you ask me what the herb is, I'm not sure what it is. If I had to guess, I would say that it was a vetiver or a, um, even a sage, but a sweet sage, a sweet sage or a vetiver. That's what I would guess. This is a basey candle. It's a basey candle. It kind of gets up into that mid range a little bit, but not very high. It's, it's a real kind of dark candle but it's not overwhelmed in musk. I mean, it's really a forward green botanical candle. There's a lushness, there's a darkness. I mean, it's just marketed appropriately, chef's kiss. But because of the sweetness of the finish of the apple and the mint, it just takes it up into a realm where it's palatable for all people as opposed to those that just lean musky, for instance, or dark or whatever else it is. I would say that this is a beautiful gateway candle. If you've been curious about darker botanicals or vetiver or, you know, those kinds of candles, but you're kind of nervous about it because they just seem awfully austere and like aggressive and masculine, I would say that this is an amazing gateway candle into that realm. See if you can stomach this because I think that this is like a really balanced kind of take on some of those smells without like abandoning itself full board into like vetiver and smoke and musk, etc. Yeah, I think it's beautiful and gorgeous. The strength and throw on this was quite decent. I would say I did try it in the open concept. It did okay. It was kind of in the five and six realm, but I found that in the back master bedroom was where it kind of came into its own. And it definitely was at least a 6.5, if not a seven, if not a 7.5. And it just, in terms of the culture of this fragrance felt so good. So I had it back there and also it was my special candle. So I didn't want to waste it in the open concept, you know? Like I wanted to treasure it back in like my favorite spaces, you know? So that's where it was, like I said, up to about a 6.5 or a seven, um, moderately sooty in the second half of the candle, but burned up like a dream, no puny wicks. I mean, really quite good in that respect. Um, 17.99, but 
Sales are not unheard of at places like Target, so definitely be watching that. And um, yeah, I just really highly recommend. First of all, I highly recommend it if this is your vibe, no question. But like I said, I highly recommend it if you're at all curious about this genre and kind of scared about it, try this one out. So I heard from somebody that they may repackage this as, or they may, they may have repackaged it as Spooky Forest um, at one point for Halloween, which makes sense. But I also noticed when I was doing some research that it came out or perhaps even comes out on a regular basis in a glass vessel, same size glass with dark black wax. And it says midnight forest, which just looks so fantastic for like deep fall Halloween without really changing your fragrance a whole lot. If you're one of those people that doesn't love Halloween, doesn't love Halloween fragrances, but kind of feels in that season like they should be doing something that's not just a generic basic bee pumpkin spice, this again might be a really amazing candle. That said, I really think you could burn this at almost any time. It's a very versatile candle because of the brightness and the fruitiness that kind of lights up the vegetation in this candle. You could get away with it even in the summer and I kind of did, right? Um, it almost goes a little bit deep like forest jungle a little bit with the fruity finish. Like it doesn't have to be October to burn this candle and I definitely would not wait till October to burn it. So um, I highly, highly, highly recommend this candle. Um, when, if and when it goes on sale at Target, I would definitely think about repurchasing another one. And I wanna try out the other candles as well as cashmere plum as well. So amazing. I'm gonna link down below. It's not only at the Yankee Candle website, but it's also at the Target website. I don't believe that Kohl's sells these particular candles, but if it's anywhere else, I'll try to link that as well. Definitely check out um, May Shu's website too if you're at all interested or maybe even her book, which is entitled Burn. I will link that on Amazon as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really happy to um, introduce Chesapeake Bay and delighted to find that there's an amazing and inspiring backstory to that company. Um, and I really hope that Yankee Candle does them justice and manages the subsidiary well. Um, well, as I said in that Yankee Candle video earlier, there are a lot of subsidiaries that I think they need to release into the wild. Um, I would like to see them hang on to Chesapeake Bay and Woodwick, I think, as well. Although I wouldn't mind just seeing Woodwick like in the fall period. Like, do we need Woodwick year round? I don't know. Talk to me. Do you burn Woodwick on a regular basis? Even in the summer? It just seems like a very cool weather campfire kind of thing with the Woodwick. I don't know that we're getting on board with Woodwicks at any other time, but I could be mistaken. So definitely talk to me about that as well. Thanks for joining me, my friends. Um, I'm gonna put this, by the way, in the Yankee Candle webs uh, playlist on my thing. So, because it technically is Yankee Candle now. So, searching for Chesapeake Bay going forward, it will be in the Yankee Candle playlist on this channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.